18 inches. So that's up and angled down.
Just watch it flow until you show. Watch, watch. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, on this most sacred night, in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters, scattered throughout the world, to come together to watch and pray, and to keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way. Listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these Paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with heavenly desire that with minds made pure we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. by his holy wounds. And his glorious wounds. May our Lord Jesus Christ Guard us. And keep us safe.
May the light of Christ in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
died completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy thought that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. Oh, truly blessed night when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle a solemn offering, the work of peace and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you, that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undid to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and that it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets Christ your Son who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, and you may proclaim the Paschal praise worthily and well in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. And I invite everyone to now blow out their candles. Please hold your candles for a moment so the wax doesn't drip too much. Okay. And now be seated and place your candles on the floor because that's where they're going to end up. I'm going to take this. A reading from the book of Genesis. 
When God created the heavens and the earth, God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. 
But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through the Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been leading Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he clogged their chariot wheels as they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians until their chariots and charioteers. So that Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power of the Lord and he had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing this song to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot, he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. sing to the Lord he has covered himself in glory let us sing to the Lord he has covered himself in glory I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been a God of my Father, I am. 
officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, He has covered Himself in glory. Please stand. Let us pray. O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The one who has become your husband is your maker. His name is the Lord of hosts. Your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, called God of all the earth. The Lord calls you back like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife married in youth and then cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great tenderness, I will take you back. In an outburst of wrath, for a moment, I hid my face from you, but with enduring love, I take pity on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is for me like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah should never again deluge the earth so I have sworn not to be angry with you or to rebuke you. Though the mountains leave their place and the hills be shaken, my love shall never leave you, nor my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In justice shall you be established far from the fear of oppression, where destruction cannot come near you. The word of the Lord. Give 
stand. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, surpass for the honor of your name what you pledge to the patriarchs by reason of their faith and through sacred adoption increase the children of your promise so that what the saints of old never doubted would come to pass, your church may now see in great part fulfilled. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me needfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David, as I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations. So shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you shall not run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to him who sows and bread to him who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, and it shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Oh 
stand. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. 
Almighty ever-living God, sole hope of the world, we rejoice in your glory as your Son has been raised from the dead. And in his resurrection, you stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin, if, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they may go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. With the celebration of the vigil, the triduum comes to an end. And yet, the vigil reminds us that it isn't the end, it is but the beginning. For our sisters and brother and the little one who will be baptized, it is the beginning of your spiritual journey with the church in full communion. With family and friends, and the church as a whole, we sing out tonight, he is risen. You know, the question that the women asked when they were going to the tomb, who will roll back the stone, is a question that is asked by many of us, especially at this moment in time. When we see the stone that seems to block any type of civil or gentle conversation, even disagreements. When we see the stone that seems to block any attempts to establish peace with justice and human dignity for all. When we see the stone that blocks attempts to establish hope, and charity. We too can become like the women going to the grave and saying, who will move back the stone? And yet we know that it is Christ who rolls back the stone. He rolls back the stone to give us freedom, to give us hope, to give us the ability to stand and be a light to the nations. After our baptism, when I invite everyone here to renew their baptismal promises, you will once again light your candles. And I'll call up our ushers or anyone who wants to volunteer to help, because lighting candles around here is a little rough. It's almost an acre of land. But in lighting those candles, it reminds us that at our baptism, and in a few moments, your baptism, you are given the light of Christ. And we're to carry that light into our world, just as this Paschal candle reminds us that the light came forth from the tomb 
in the body of Christ, a resurrected body, a new life body, and there gives us hope for eternal life. When we leave here and we begin the Easter celebration, may each one of us allow our light to shine brightly for those who we will gather with, for those who, will, who we will work with, for those who we share community with, so that Christ's light, Christ's presence, Christ's life will inhabit the earth and bring forth new life and new hope and new compassion. Please stand.
and ones to new be seated. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty powers through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and in who many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and the beginning of virtue. <coughs> o God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shrod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water received by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image, and wash clean through the sacrament of baptism from all squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this fount, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to new life in him, who lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I now invite our candidates to be baptized to come forward. This is a first, having a baby at the Easter Vigil, and we're very pleased to be able to do it. Now, remember, godparents and mom, that you're taking the baptismal promises for Emily. Amelia? Madeline. One out of, th one out of three. She doesn't have a badge, so I... I know. Now she won't talk to me because I misnamed her. Okay. So, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? 
Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? Mallory, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Francis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hold on. She's not going to like me after this. <laughs> Is it your will that we baptize Natalie in the faith we have all professed with you? Yes. yes. Natalie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You can come closer. You won't get wet again. Okay. My sisters, my brother, my little one, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that you may have everlasting life. At this time, I ask the godparents to... <laughs> Give it. <laughs> <laughs> 
give it to the godmother. We're asking this little one to do a lot, so we'll give her plenty of room. Godparents, come forward, give them a candle, please, and then go to the deacon to receive the light of Christ. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, Godfather, you're going to give your candle to Frank, okay? Folks, turn around. Receive the light of Christ. And then face me with the candle. Yeah. You have been enlightened by faith in Christ and to walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. And when the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. All right, at this time, I would invite you to um, blow out your candles. Well, no, don't blow out your candles, but go back to your, uh, your seats. Okay. And I invite everyone to stand and get their candles for the renewal of baptismal promises. I invite the RCIA team to come forward to get a light and start lighting. Thank you. This is the quickest this has gone. My dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now, at our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the law of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the father and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Jesus Christ, our Lord, for eternal life. Amen.
send them home. <laughs> it must be this side of the cathedral. Folks, it's your problem. <laughs> Last year we sent Deacon Rolf and he never came back. <laughs> now we send Father Joe and he hasn't come back yet. Thank you, Father. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At this time, again, I ask you to extinguish your candles. You may extinguish your candles. And once again, place them on the floor and be seated. I ask that, oh no, the newly ordained, put your candles down or give them to your sponsor. Okay. And please come forward. My dear friends, by your baptism you have been born again, and in Christ by baptism. You have become members of Christ and his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promise strengthen of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make of you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses of his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
By water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Rose, be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With Abigail, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Our little one will receive her confirmation when the bishop comes at another time. So she will not be confirmed at this time. Okay. And let the assembly show their agreement in what has taken place. And let us now stand as we continue to celebrate this Mass of the Easter Vigil. God's mercy endures forever, and so we can confidently bring our needs before the Lord, asking for his mercy as we seek, that we seek. For the whole church, reborn in the risen Lord, that we may continually bear witness to the effects of the resurrection on our lives, giving us and the world joy, hope, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the resurrection of our Lord may bring comfort to those who suffer, hope to those in despair, and new life to all those who are dying, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that the risen Lord may move the hearts of all those who are in conflict with one another, whether in war between nations or grudges between neighbors, bringing peace and reconciliation among all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of injustice, for all those who continue to suffer the effects of past injustices, that they may be made whole by the author of justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially for Father Al Riccadelli, for all the names online and in our parish intention book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who mourn, as we remember those who have died, especially Thomas Tyrone, Marilyn Marino, Michael Chiaffi, and George Basilino, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those we have been asked to remember at this Mass, especially the people of the parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of life and love, you raised your Son from the grave, giving us hope and meaning, our lives to save. Grant that the new life you promise may raise us up as we raise our prayers to you through your Son, Jesus Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more glorious, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, the prayer to the fullness of charity, Father Francis, our Pope, David, our bishop, and all the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all you holy people. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the, the Blessed Apostles, Robert Bellman, James, Bernadette of all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, to praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With confidence, let us pray the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be but only the of my soul shall be. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. second communion hymn, please join in singing number 309, Here at This Table.
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. We do have a few announcements. Just a reminder, there will be no confession or Eucharistic adoration this Tuesday, April 2nd. Adoration and confessions will resume on Tuesday, April 9th. On Thursday, April 4th, the Diocese of Trenton will celebrate the Blue Mass here at the Coe Cathedral at 10.30 a.m. All the faithful are invited to attend and pray for and give thanks for the men and women in law enforcement. And the Blue Mass is really a beautiful liturgy. If you can make it, I know it's during the week and in the morning, but it is truly a way of giving thanks to God for all men and women in all the departments of law enforcement, federal, state, county, municipal, uh, prison, everyone who is involved in uh, safeguarding the community. So please share that with people. The St. Rita Novena will begin on Wednesday, April 10th, and every Wednesday through June 3rd in the chapel at 7 p.m. And the parishes will be closed. Uh, well, they're closed until Tuesday, all right? I'll get yelled at for not announcing that, but you know. Okay. And also, I want to thank everybody who made the Triduum what it was and is, and that is a prayer experience uh, from our music, musicians who have been working very hard, especially with me, poor Bob has kept saying, what are the readings? So I know the Psalms. I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. <laughs> he found out this week. Anyway, um, our Art and Environment uh, Committee that made the church look so beautiful and so appropriate at each moment of the Triduum. Our, Deacons, I'm very grateful to have Father Joe with us. I'm grateful to have Father Joe with us throughout the last couple of years. Thank you so very much. And also um, our lectors, our servers, um, everyone, our ushers, everyone who was involved. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And in a very, back in the, back when I used to visit my grandmother, we would say, Bona Pasqua, a good Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exult in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come Amen. down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. One more brief announcement. You know those candles with the glass? You did very well, I have to say. I didn't hear them dropping, so thank you. But also, you can take them home, because remember they were blessed a couple of times. Or you can put them in the baskets in the gathering area, okay? and have a blessed Easter. Oh, thanks be to God. Didn't you say thanks be to God? As we are sent forth from our celebration, please join in singing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.